All right, welcome to Refrigerated Diaries, Behind the Food, keeping the people engaged with the food. Share your stories, videos, music topics. Let people know what's going on in your diary. Hashtag, what's your ID? And we are kicking it with Paul Jones from Tiva Capital. What up? What's up? Yes. So we were just going into like the, the ins and outs of business dynamics as it relates to just making proper decisions for yourself you know i think it was a hashtag leave your mark hashtag know your worth you know right you that's know, it putting it down on the table here so uh we're gonna kind of go into it here a little bit with you um why don't you tell us about your most awkward food experience well so my 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 most uh, wild experience was eating something that I didn't think I was going to like and I, I really liked. Uh, There's a couple really awkward food experiences. And back in the late 90s, I lived in China. Okay. And that sort of lends itself to a whole, <laughs> a whole um, list of different experiences. And this was back, this was the, the real China, not like the Starbucks China that, that you see now. But um, in one particular case, and I guess this, all, this audience is suitable, but you know, you would see all types of delicacies, and I was a, I was a professor, so they were always, my students were always trying to introduce me to new things, and whenever I went somewhere, I would always get like the, the most flavorful part of the dish, which is also usually the weirdest thing, you know. Uh-huh. And one time, um, I, I had this, this out where I would tell everyone, like, if there was something that I did not like, instead of being rude and like, I'm not eating that, I would say I'm allergic to it, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that was my way of being polite. So there was a situation where they they served me a dish, and it was after, you know, having a few beers, and I see this thing, and I'm, oh, that looks like a, a you know, looks like a, 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 pe- a bull's penis. Uh-huh. And it was, it was literally that. And I asked them, I said, what is this? And they said, <laughs> confirm my you know <laughs> so i said uh yeah i'm a, i'm allergic to that i definitely you know so a couple of days later you know same student sees me at like this this little restaurant like the one american hamburger joint in shanghai at the time and i'm getting down on a hamburger you know enjoying <laughs> life and they come to me and they said you know uh, you know jones we thought you were uh, allergic to the you know to to the beef and uh, I said, you know, I, I'm not allergic to the to the beef. I'm just allergic to penises. I just can't eat penises. So that was <laughs> so that was my way of getting out. And then there's a short another story again. My time in China, I uh, one of my one of my friends, he ended up, um, you know, we were go out with a vendor, and he gave me this soup, and it was really really tasty. I mean, I was enjoying it, and. Uh, um, I asked him what's in this soup, and he said, I'll tell you after, which, you know, I should have been very suspicious, but I kept <laughs> on eating. And I said, no, man, I got to know. I said, I don't care what's in this so good. I just want to know. He says, we call it the nine meat stew. So as I'm eating, I'm counting down the different type of meats it could be. So I'm like, okay, chicken, beef, you know, snake, rabbit. And I, I'm getting to, like, the last three, and then I realized I really didn't want to know. So I guess that was an awkward experience, not because I was e- I mean, because I was eating what I really didn't know, but it was surprisingly delicious as well. So, you know. <laughs> I hear that some of the most awful meats, you know, that you could think of are, are the most delicious and delicate. Uh, still won't take me away from you, though, all right? <laughs> well, I think as long as you don't know. I mean, you know, in West Africa, they have uh, this whole concept of bush meat, mm-hmm. and really you don't know what it is, right? You know, so let's jump in. As long as you jump in and you know you you go without reservations, then it's all in your mind. Carpe but. diem, <laughs> you know, seize it, <laughs> exactly. seize it. So you know, what what, what what do you like to eat when no one's watching you? What you got any secret? You know you. Eating anything on the low? Oh, well, that's what they say. No one's watching, right? So you're not <laughs> really supposed to say. Oh, um, you know, I I like my ramen noodles. I got to be honest. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing, but I really like to get into it, you know. So uh, it's a throwback to the college days. 
Uh, so I put all types of stuff in there. It's like I empty out the fridge and put whatever is in there in my ramen noodles, and it comes out really good. So that's sort of my my go to. Other than that, um, you know, every now and then, yeah, I still got to get down on my White Castle or got to get down on on different you know different foods that you know as you educate your palate a little bit and you you don't associate yourself with you still when no one's looking after dark you got to go stop by this restaurant this this greasy spoon spot that you know that you would never want your friends to know so yeah i, I sort of veer off the path that way i used to when i was a, a wee lad you know like a couple years ago those drunken nights someone told me that white castle did real egg on their breakfast sandwiches. <laughs> and so every night, like it'd be about like 2.30, 1.30, I hit the White Castles up and, and I would and I would be like, yo, do you guys use real eggs? And <laughs> and from there, that became my like my like little secret passion. Like I, I had a White Castle up in the wee hours, like around 1.30. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think y- you never lose it. You sort of, you know, put it in the back burner, but every now and then, like you said, after a few drinks, you know, you lose your your fast food inhibitions and you go for it. And yeah. you feel it the next day, though, right? You're really like, oh, my God, what did I do? Why did I do this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what kind of trends are you noticing in food? You know, you're, you're on like a – and you you don't just deal with, with food clients. You deal with everyone. Uh, make that clear. Tiva Capital handles all of the dollars, you know. Imagine a world where – you can discuss finances and business development in a one-stop shop. Now that's where we're. we're wow, that was pretty powerful. Man. I want to uh, call those people. Who's that? <laughs> um, no, you know, again, just being back in Detroit and for the last couple of years, everything's different. Like you know, when I first came back, I you know I was just sort of privy to this whole uh, food truck scene. And I think that that has been a great a great thing because it's allowed people to test out concepts without going all in. So the whole pop-up, you know, pop-up seeing that a few different food halls are, are, are coming on the scene, uh, the food trucks. So it's allowing people to test their concept out um, and without spending all their dollars in, in getting it off the ground and in developing the following. So I think that's that's really great for, like, the, the up-and-coming food artist out there like yourself so Mm -hmm. um and then just the blend like you know there's a couple you and there's a couple another a couple other african restaurants out there and having spent the last 10 years in west africa i certainly can appreciate that um but yeah i I think that just the new wave of people coming in and the the uh, low cost of doing business relative to other cities in the u.s has just made you know detroit a a, a, a breeding ground for new concepts. No, that's fantastic. You know, um, one of the things that I I find very noticeable in, in the Detroit food scene right now is just a commitment to uh, incorporating partnerships. Like I have noticed that in the past, when you, you think of uh, of the very first time that you drove by, what was I think the first one was like a Church's Chicken and a Domino's, or like. Like that, like joint, mm. like joint business, where it's like just two different concepts that now like work together. I have noticed that a lot with just businesses in general now. I, I was in Florida recently, and there was a car wash that had a restaurant inside of it. You know, so I was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like that's awesome. And then um, Megan uh, is talking to me about um, this future wifey there for those that don't know. Um, mm is uh, talking to me about an uh, airport parking structure that also does detailing, car wash, and oil change. You know, just basic features for your car and a one, one-stop shop. You know, I I um, would uh, would definitely do that. Like, I, I almost want to get a parking lot at, with a car wash and see if that <laughs> I can do that here <laughs> in, in the city. So I, 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 I agree with you. I think that the, the trending there it's like second to none. Um, do you think that there's going to be like any like shifts in food culture this year? Like have you anything that you've seen or just any shifts in business culture? I do. Like I said, I, I see that it's there's so many more pop ups that are happening. Um, you know, I, I'm seeing so many different ethnic 
uh, food groups that were underrepresented coming on the scene now. What you guys are bringing to the table is just phenomenal. You know, just spending time in your restaurant, seeing people come in looking for a chicken or a hamburger and coming out, you know, with a whole different appreciation on, on different food types is, is, you know, been really eye-opening. Uh, seeing a few Filipino restaurants opening up. So I, I think, like, you know, Detroiters are, are really getting exposed to a lot of different food uh, types. And, you know, and I, again, like I said, the vegan scene has just exploded here. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it, like, I've seen vegan restaurants in, in the hood, right? I'm like, you know, I know that brother's not vegan because I just seen him at the rib <laughs> joint the other day, right? right? But it's like, you know, it's, it's coming across where you don't have to be vegan, to eat at a vegan place and appreciate the food, you know? And I think our minds as a city are just opening up, and then that breeds more and more concepts coming to the table. So I think it's, it's, it's perpetuating. The momentum's there, man. I mean, you never know what the next concept's going to be, but, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's being well-received. So it's not just open up a new Coney Island, but it's more of, you know, something off the grid, off the radar, and... Um, yeah, I, I'm really, really impressed and, and, and um, yeah, always taken aback by the new concepts coming online. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, as a, a proponent of just pushing businesses forward, is there anything that you'd like <laughs> to see more of inside the uh, biz world here? Like, if you look, you look at quite like, intimately quite a bit of different companies. Like you're, absolutely. Like in the... Uh, like most people want to like, I would say that you're probably more in the know than most people <laughs> who think they are in the know. <laughs> From the number side, yeah, I mean, I see a lot of the the various restaurants and and other companies that are in the headlines, and you sort of know what <laughs> what the numbers are behind it, so you get that perspective. Yeah. But I would say one, um, when companies come on the scene, uh, there's a lot of capital sources out there, and making sure that companies come up and they have the right capital base to market, to advertise, especially if you're coming up with a new concept people haven't heard of, and there's that educational factor. So I think the financial education piece has to match the creativity and the innovation out there. So making sure that you have the right dollars in your pocket. And they're, and they're out there. You know, there's all types of funding sources out there. So seeing entrepreneurs tap into that and being able to to have the sustainability to 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 promote their business and their new concept is is one key thing. And then like you said, a lot of collaboration. So you know, I, I you know, I'm just throwing this out there. I don't know if this exists, and if it does, if it doesn't, you create it, pay me royalties. But like a hair salon where people are delivering food there because you're waiting all day to get your hair done. You know, so all these cl- uh, cross collaboration activities. I think that uh, I love to see more of that. Detroit's a big city. Well, I would say it's a small city or a big town, and everybody knows everybody. So I like to see how how different concepts are coming together. The shopping shops are out there. The uh, like I said, the pop up scene is out there. So more of that and being able to to test your product out and 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 before you go all in, before you pivot, understanding you know how well the market receives it. So I think we I think we're in a good situation. I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what else you young brothers come up with, young sisters come up with that uh, that you know just blows our taste buds away. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Any and all hair salons, you know, let us know. We got you. Exactly. You know, we'll, Delivery, we'll, baby. We'll set it up. <laughs> you know, barbershops, too. We got you. You know, that, that's where it started. That's you got to go after the captive audience, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, yep. should, you should do that, man. Get all among your circuit and just do your hair salon delivery track, right? Yeah. So uh, before we, we head out in, in, in our, uh, our talk here, I, I understand that you're going to be doing a little bit more of this, like TV Capital, like – keeping us informed, you know, doing some uh, some more content out here. You know, like, uh, what what can we, like, realistically, like, see? Like, do you think where we, we can see something, like, a, on a monthly basis or, like? Uh, yeah, so I'm old school, so I'm going to launch a newsletter, right? <laughs> so we're going to do our newsletter just with a few tidbits out there. Um, I, through Motor City Match, they, they have me on speaking engagements with the whole cityscape going on, so I – I, I'm on that circuit, and yeah, I'm looking forward to just different opportunities to to spread a little bit of financial uh, knowledge about scaling up your business, how to extract money out of your business. You know, entrepreneurs, we put so much into it, but we never pay ourselves. So, how to pay yourself out of your business, and mm-hmm. how to and how to uh, 
to take it to the next level. So yeah, um, one, I appreciate you keeping me on your show and, and anyone else out there who, who wants to uh, bring a financial aspect to your, to your discussions, you know, we're, we're ready to come out there and, and drop a little knowledge. Absolutely. And honestly, I recommend it. Make sure you do it. Uh, thanks so much for coming on, Paul. We appreciate you here. If you want to go know more, you know, it's uh, Tiva Capital. We can uh, reach us at tivacapital.com. Yep. It's a website. You know, if you're Googleable, you know, it's always the first check on a, a successful business is you can Google it. So it's just up and running, you know, and I can uh, tell you firsthand that the conversations are insightful and the, uh, the knowledge is impactful. And, um, you know, anybody... Uh, can can you know tell you what to do with you know your numbers you know there's YouTube videos of, of about that but no one is going to be able to to give you the sounding board perspective on how to properly grow and scale your business through these murky waters I'm, I'm you know I'm trying to tell you real talk you know so definitely give the brother a call and uh, and be on the lookout for that newsletter and uh, all future content from Tiva Capital on financial efficacy coming soon. All right, that's Refrigerated Diaries. We appreciate it. Uh, we've been getting a lot of requests for music. You guys want to get done with that? Uh, we appreciate that. Let us know. We've got an awesome event coming on. It's called the Sacred Circle Cipher. It's going to be happening this Friday. Come by. It's free. We're going to have some authentic African drummers circling around getting it down, doing it for the culture of Detroit, African, and the city. All right, we'll see you on the next episode.